Tens of thousands of scientists plan to mark Earth Day tomorrow by marching in hundreds of cities across the country and around the world. They'll be protesting cuts to research and programs to fight climate change. This comes as Americans are growing pessimistic about the environment. A CBS News poll today found just 12 percent believe the environment will improve for the next generation. 57 percent say it'll get worse. Dr. John LaPook begins our coverage. Eric Jarvis studies the neurobiology of language at New York City's Rockefeller University. His entire research team is going to tomorrow's March for Science. When the first time in recorded history, scientists have to get together to form a march in support of science, something serious is going on. What's different now? What's different is that the most powerful country in the world is attacking science, is attacking evidence-based logical thinking. That is a pretty serious attack, not on just science, but just on being human. Participants will range from geologists to geneticists, physicists to farmers, students to teachers. Their concerns include an 18 percent, six billion dollar proposed cut in funding for the National Institutes of Health, denial of what they see as established science, such as the threat of climate change, and the changing immigration policy. Foreign-born scientists fill nearly half of U.S. postdoctoral research positions. Job. Cell biologist Lydia Viacomarov is one of the coordinators. Do you sense that the definition of what a fact is has actually changed? I worry about that. A fact is something which is testable and verifiable by a variety of means and a variety of people. We're confusing opinions and facts, beliefs and facts, and that is a mistake when the country tries to decide where it should take certain policy decisions. And for those people who say, oh, just stay in your lab, science and politics do not mix. Well, if you cut the funding, I can't stay in my lab. So I got to come out. Anthony, for scientists like Jarvis to come out of their labs in March is a big deal. But the sentiment I'm hearing is, who better to defend science than the people who do it? Dr. John LaPook, thanks, John.